We are John and Ellie, the Barefoot Doctors. Join us on this new chapter on our brand new Leopard 45 catamaran as we unearth the jewels of the med. And the world. Because life is better barefoot. Here we are on the west coast of Italy, currently at Formia. As we prepare to leave, we see multiple fire fronts developing in the hills around us and from where we sit, it seems like all of Italy is on fire. So the hills behind Formia are on fire there. It's been on fire all day, but the, the helicopters and the water drops are not controlling it and that looks like it's progressing. Now that looks like there's some houses that are under threat. These poor helicopters seem to be dwarfed by the size of the fire and it didn't look like they were making much progress at all, especially when it looked like they were only scooping up small amounts in that tiny little bucket compared to the size of the fire. But eventually they seemed to get it under control and as soon as they did that they had to go up the hill because another fire had started. Gosh, it just seems to be like a losing battle for them. Now another one started. No sooner had they got that area under control, they had to go to another area and start all over again. So the helicopter getting flying down onto the water and sucking up water to then drop on the fire directly ahead. As you can imagine, we are keen to get far away from this area as we can, as fast as we can. <laughs> We're not really happy around fires. <laughs> as you can imagine. Our next stop down the coast was the islands of Priscilla and Ischia, as well as Capri and Sorrento in the Bay of Naples. But these were very restricted areas and controlled by regulations you had to get online. We went online and tried to work through the process, but it was really, really complicated. And the applications for approval had to be sent with the money to the department and you then had to wait for them to approve it. I tried to get feedback from the department as to how long this would take. And the answer was, well, maybe three days or maybe a week. We seriously considered missing this whole area out due to the hassles involved, but we stuck with it. We paid our 20 euros for a week's category B approval and hoped that it would come through in time. The regulations were very complex with four categories from category A, where you are not even allowed to drive through that area. The yellow areas are category B, where you're allowed to anchor, but do almost nothing else. We wanted to get away from the fire fronts anyway, so we headed off down the 35 miles to Presida. But because we didn't have approval at this stage, we had to anchor on the north side. But this was fully exposed to the northwesterly wind that was blowing at about 20 to 25 knots for the first night at the island. 
This meant we had the most unpleasant night slapping into these one or two foot waves and I seriously considered sailing around the corner to get the protection in the regulated area, despite our approvals not being through yet. This is Nellie's first night in a really rolly anchorage. I hope she'll be all right. Okay, folks, so John is out on the next adventure. We not long poured ourselves a wine and nibbles and Nellie saw a floating cushion. So John's decided to jump on the sup and go and see if it's worth retrieving. Look at the style. Look at that technique. The prize from the gods. A yoga mat. We always keep an eye out for anyone that it may belong to. Ah, but time for a glass of wine and to watch the sunset. A sunset looks beautiful in any part of the world, no matter where you are. So let's sit back and watch this one. Is there really such a thing as this green flash? Well, yes, there is, because John and I have seen quite a few. Actually, it's one of our favorite things to do as we watch the sunset. After this night of disturbed sleep, we motored around the short distance to the main harbour of Presida, and being Elise's birthday, we went shopping. And what a gorgeous little place this was too. Unfortunately, in Italy, it seems you're a little bit restricted as to where you can bring your dinghy, so that's a bit of a hassle. But finally, we found where we could legally park our dinghy. <laughs> this was my fish and chip burger. <laughs> I didn't expect my chips to be inside the burger. I thought they'd be on the plate beside it. But anyway, when in Rome. Now, time to explore this cute little village. Buying Ellie a few cute little numbers, as well as a lovely bikini. Oh no, it's not. It's a one piece, she tells me. They all look just as good to me. What? At least I'm baking? What's up, Doc? <laughs> hey guys, we interrupt this program for an important health message. So here it is. We know we've been banging on for a long time about the importance of staying out of the sun, keeping yourself protected from skin cancer and all that kind of thing. But today, we're going to balance it up with the benefits of actually being in the sun. And contradicts ourselves by saying how important it is to get a bit of sun, guys. Let's talk about why. Okay, so vitamin D, one of the essential um, elements in your body, and this is created by exposing your skin to some sun. Now the key here is that it's a little bit of sun, it's not a lot of sun, because a lot of sun leads to skin cancer. If you are getting older in years, you need more vitamin D to strengthen your bones. Vitamin D is an essential element for your calcium metabolism, but it's also an essential element which is used by all your cells in your body for your cellular health and healing. So it basically helps all the other cells to function at their premium level. So vitamin D is really important. So it's important to remember to get the sunshine directly on the skin so that the body has the ability to turn that into vitamin D. How much sun do you need? Fair to medium skin only needs about 10 to 15 minutes of gentle sun every day. Sphere. Gentle sun in the tropics. Thank in you. the northern hemisphere, you're gonna need more of 30 that. 30 to 45 minutes probably. But the other thing is, if you have dark skin with lots of melanin, the melanin acts like a sunblock in your skin and stops the sun rays or the, um, the ultraviolet getting in and creating that vitamin D. So if you're dark skin, you need more time in the sun. 
and that's why it's often recommended for people with darker skin to spend more time in the sun. This is, one of our subscribers actually asked us that question, why? Because he's from India and he said, why is it that they are told they need to get out in the sun and here we are going on about saying keep out of the sun. So that's where the balance is. The skin cancer still happens in dark skinned folk, but much less because of that melanin protecting them from the damaging ultraviolet. Um, okay, so when you're deficient in vitamin D, how do you know? What are the signs? Well, vitamin D, as you said, is essential for bone strength, so severe deficiency results in rickets, a well-known disease which isn't around these days because of better dietary habits. Um, but it also causes dry skin, feeling blue or depressed irritability, weak bones, uh, cramps and a sweaty head. So these are all symptoms, but you can be deficient without any symptoms at all. So you can get a blood test to, to detect your levels of vitamin D and see if you need um, a booster because you can get supplements in tablet form as well as food. So what foods? Well, I'm glad you asked. There's a lot of foods that can boost your vitamin D level, which is salmon and tuna, which is really good for people that live on boats. <laughs> Actually, egg yolk is really good for it as well. And cod liver oil. So also orange juice, um, liver and sardines, all high in vitamin D levels. So eat those and you'll supplement your, your vitamin D. And your 15 to 45 minutes in the sun, depending on where you are. And don't forget to rotisserate. <laughs> what do you call it? <laughs> what do you call it, the rot <laughs> rotisserie? Rotisserie. Don't forget to rotisserie. You know what I mean. I know what you mean. Like a chook, you know how they have the chook on the... On the spit. <laughs> chook on the spit. Did, Did you, you know? know that vitamin D is produced by the UVB rays in the sunlight and this is completely blocked by glass. So if you're in the car or if you're under glass getting sun rays, you are not getting any benefit for vitamin D production. So get out there into the real sun, expose yourself for that short time and you'll get your UVB. Now, the painful thing is that UVA, which also causes skin cancer, does get through through glass in cars, so that will still cause skin cancer. So if you're driving along in your car, you're not even getting your vitamin D, but you're getting a risk of skin cancer. So cover up, wear long sleeves preferably, or sunblock. Or if you work in a building and you're getting that sun beating through the glass window, you're more susceptible for skin cancer. Okay guys, so we hope you've enjoyed this new segment called What's Up Doc? And back to the show. Show? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a show! <laughs> After the day at the main harbour of Priscilla, we did get our approval for the Category B authorization. So we made our way around to the south side to get protection from the swells and anchored just outside the marina for another night until they had space the following day. Here we had crystal clear water and lovely flat seas for a good night's sleep. You'll be squealing if they bite you. <laughs> I will be. No, oh, they didn't! <laughs> <Don't you? laughs> Little fish nibble. <laughs> Oh, he's got a customer. Yeah, he's got a girl with a thong on. I wonder if that helps sales. Probably. Of course it would. Oh, at last a calm anchorage and time to explore town. So where are we? We are here. On the island of... Ishia. Prasida. Prasida. Oh, <laughs> one. Prasida. and ports seem to be jam-packed at this time of the year. We we're lucky to get a spot. We're watching the sunset. Looking for the green glow. Look how brown no looks compared to how white I look. Look at this one. Look at this one.
Okay guys, so we are heading from Presidio, which is just behind us, to Ischia, which is just in front of us. We're going to anchor behind this castle, which is an Aragonese castle made by the Aragons some centuries ago. Um, and it's really very impressive, like vertical cliffs, top of a, and that's a, an island all by itself in the, on the, in the shallow waters just off Ischia. So hopefully we'll go and explore it, get an anchor just behind there, hopefully nice protected waters and see what it's got to offer. We're also very excited because on Ischia there are thermal springs and we're hoping to go and test or explore some thermal springs on the island of Ischia. So that should be exciting too. Come along with us, it should be great. So what's the anchorage look like? I'm um, just looking to see where we can go or where we can fit in a place that's authorised. Um, so, at the moment I'm not sure where we're going, but we'll drive around and see. There are a lot of rules in Italy, aren't there? There are. Trying to work out what they are is really tricky, especially when a lot of their websites are in Italian. The charts are in Italian too, which doesn't help. Look at this magnificent castle perched on the hill here. Oh, who doesn't love a castle? Seems like a great place to drop the pick and get some nice protection from this hill. Looking at all the shops and stores and finally I get some hanging garlic. Great, at a good price. I took a bit of a shine to these jumbo donuts. They are so delicious. We'll just need one between the three of us. What you got there? We have got here a donut. It's big. Yeah. Mm. Mm, looks good. What's the, what's the verdict? Mm. Very nice. Time to explore the castle and to wear off some of the calories of that donut. Where's Sorrento? Sorrento is that bit that touches the landland, then you get sea and then you get the island of Capri. That's where we're going. That's indeed. And on the left there is Vesuvius, which is near Pompeii, and Naples is on the left of that. It's all very close. It is very close. And just behind this little um, volcanic island called Vivari is Presida, and then the mainland is again behind that. So it's all very close. Like I say, if you want to get to the good places, they're always up. Is it real? So thanks for watching guys. We hope you've liked this video and if you really have and you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe and then like and then tick the notification button so that you get notified when there's a new video out. So thanks very much. 
and we'd love to see you next time. Important key here is you have to get the vitamin D directly on the skin. So that gives, oh, I said it again. <laughs> Let's try it again, third time lucky.